Okay, so part two part of courtship. Um, we had to change cameras. So one thing that I just told Daddy today, which I don't know if you've heard this part yet. Okay. So I was just telling Daddy today that one thing is we've talked about courtship and what we want it to look like and what parameters we're going to put in place and things like that, is we had talked about doing supervised times as a do you want to call it a couple like the courting the people who are courting what do you call that a couple so a couple, a couple. Yeah. um so Courts. doing supervised things but not having opportunities for sin in the way that you would have if you were completely private no accountability that sort of thing if that makes sense like temptation um and so we've talked about doing like double dates with other mm -hmm. Christian couples that we trust <laughs> who would hold us to the standards that we've set. But by double date, not like another couple who's courting, like a couple who's already married. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I oh. think that would be a prerequisite, like that they've been married for at least 20 years. Or 30, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we know some people who haven't been married that long that would still be okay. Hey, Don and Cindy, oh, yeah. I guess I'm going on double dates with you. <laughs> and, um, Grandma and Grandpa and... <laughs> I am last about <laughs> Um... Oh, and the couple, Jeff and Rebecca. Jeff and Rebecca and Jeff and Rebecca. Ginger and Al. They've been married yeah. like 57 years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good news. So got some people cool. now. Okay, so what was I saying? You ask oh. them what? Going on dates. We did courtship back then. Oh, yes, we should. Okay. That's what we did with them. Um, so, oh, yes, double dates. But I was saying, well, I think parental involvement is very important, and I'm sure we're going to be spending a lot of time together with my family and his family, whoever he is. Joe um, Schmo. Joe Schmo. Oh, that's right. He has a name. Joe Schmo. Um, <laughs> Joe's family. Joe's family. Yes. Um, I think I would also like to have some time with another Christian chaperone without mommy and daddy there to see if the guy acts differently when they're not around. To see if he's just putting on a front when you guys are present. Or if he acts the same in other situations. I would like to see how Joe Schmo acts around um, his siblings, his mother, my sibling, like my sisters, my mother. You know. Yeah. How does he treat women in his life? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a big that, thing. That's huge. Because mm -hmm. we've seen in churches where either there's this view that men have taken of women that women are strong and independent and like the feminist view they need to cower in the corner no while their wife takes over <laughs> oh yeah yes yes the, like, so secular feminist like the secular so feminist the idea that just we're going to the woman is going to have a huge lead in the household and maybe even take over in the household um we don't want that we don't want men to have that view mm -hmm. we want men to see women as the weaker vessel and be the one leading the family, seeing seeing the need for that. Mm -hmm. But we also don't want men that think because a man is supposed to lead the family that he gets to like hold the thumb on them and they you know. There's a lot of tyrants out there. Yeah. They shouldn't see them as a weaker I, vessel I, that I they're supposed to crush. One of those tyrants. <laughs> He's not we've, anymore. We've learned a lot. But yeah, not not um <laughs> not having to tell people all the time I'm the tyrant in the household. Yeah. Not saying it in those ways. But remember, <laughs> well, he says that a lot. Just joking. <laughs> it's all kidding. Okay. It's all kidding. Okay. But remember you know, like if if somebody always has to say, You remember I'm in charge around here, or remember I'm the boss around here, yeah. it means that they're not secure in their yeah. meeting. Where mm -hmm. if a man is leading well and a wife is submitting biblically, no one has to walk around reminding people of their roles. Well, mm -hmm. I guess that's well, because your role is your job to do, not a title to be esteemed. Oh, Father. Like, no. It's a job. Well, you like we were talking today, we saw a to work to man, you. one of our friends, I'll say their names because they respond on a bunch of our Facebook stuff. So Hannah and Branson. Yep. Um, Hannah is very pregnant, and her husband was helping yeah. today with a exercise. I'm assuming they got from the midwife or whatever, but to help 
position baby well because she's mm -hmm. due a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah. And um, so he was <laughs> he was very much serving his wife yeah. in a very physical way, mm -hmm. um, serving her um, because he understands the importance of his wife in the job that she's doing, preparing mm -hmm. for labor here yeah. in a couple days. And so he was like, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. When you're the leader, you also need to be willing to serve. Mm -hmm. So a man that's mm -hmm. willing to serve is very important. Yeah. I've also seen it. Um, Jesus did. There's a pastor, a missionary, and one day a week he gives his wife the day off and he does the cooking. I've just seen that as another thing. Done. Mm -hmm. Because he knows, because they're the ones with the little baby, right? Yeah, yeah. they have a little baby. Mm -hmm. So, like, she has a hard job right now, and so he gives her, not that you have to have, like, planned, like, right. set dates and all of that mm -hmm. stuff, but in that their household, that's how it works, because of his schedule and everything. He's able to say, I have Wednesdays to be able to help in this way. And so, mm -hmm. some families, it might not look like that. It might look different, but, yeah, that's a way. Just one way I've seen one it done. Way. Not that it's a rule or anything. Yeah. Just yeah. one way. So, um, so the man coming, um, so anyone, any man watching this video that would like to, um, <laughs> court to Virginia, please apply down below, but, <laughs> but if you come to Virginia, sorry, <laughs> and you will get grilled, sorry, if my, you my come brother, to the Virginia, retired Marine was in town last week and now they, he's got the kids talking like him and now he's got me talking like him. So if you come to Virginia, <laughs> Before her daddy, the answer is no. I Just might no. slap you. Yeah, yeah. She's or she vicious. might say, "Come meet my daddy," and he'll slap you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, be a man. Talk to the man. That's what we call a poacher. <laughs> I'm saying, be a man. Talk to the man. So that's how it works. <laughs> because of our view that girls are under the headship of their fathers until they're under the headship of another man, you need to talk to her head. And that would be her daddy. That's It'd be weird to talk to here. anything but the head. <laughs> yes. You talk to my uncle? <laughs> so, um... Is they're not supposed to ask you, Naomi? <laughs> we would expect... She's the elbow? You help him get food to his I'm mouth. Confused. I'm assigning you his elbow right now. <laughs> so, um, we would expect a young man to come yes. to daddy or daddy talking to the young man in the bible times you almost always see the men interacting with the men in the like going about getting wives and those mm -hmm. types of things like the you know Laban yep. you're just talking about Rachel and Leah mm -hmm. that was her like that was their thought no. except when the women are Brother. dancing and they Brother. steal wives yes then they I don't think, I think Laban was Rachel and Leah's dad, but uh, the, yeah. he was brother to Rebecca. Oh, brother right. to Rebecca, right. So he, he was involved in two of them. <laughs> yeah. I knew that. But, right. um, he was in two of those. The, like, even, like, um, Hadassah, Esther, Esther. <laughs> Esther, was in her uncle Mordecai's house. So, like, there was, there was a male headship in these different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And very rarely do you see the woman involved in getting, I mean, like in the story of Naomi and Ruth, the men in the family were no longer there. So, right. but I think when there's, the men are usually involved. And Ruth kind of asked anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're advocating Ruth's courtship practices. No, no, no. <laughs> Speaking of ancient courtship practices. Yes. No, I'm just the threshing floor? <laughs> I'm just saying that the men seem to be involved. So in our household, mm -hmm. that's how it's going to be, is that a man will go to the head of the family. And for our household, daddy has the right when the man comes to say, nope, you're not talking to my daughter. Maybe you're not talking to my daughter now and you'll get a chance in the future. Or maybe it's just a no. Just go away and don't ask again. <laughs> but don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> but as you learn from the story of Paul Washer, even if the dad says no, you just need to... Not talk to the daughter, and maybe you'll get her anyway. <laughs> you can See, tell that story Paul very Trust Paul Washer briefly. and leave me alone. <laughs> no, you want to find something else. You want to tell the story very briefly of Paul Washer? Um, he went and talked to the dad, and he said, no, don't talk to my daughter. So he didn't, and then the dad comes back and said, hey, will you marry my daughter? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's who 
Paul Washer is still married to mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not to the dad. <laughs> to the dog. To the dad. Good job. Um, so the... Uh, you can go to bed. Samuel's trying to figure out what he can read. <laughs> go get one of the, like, the medicine carrier or one of those little books. He knows what I'm talking about. So anyway, um... It's a book called The Little Medicine Carrier. So in our in our household, yeah. Daddy gets... <laughs> I read the pharmacy card. <laughs> in the household, Daddy the gets the chance to first tell the guy, no, <clears throat> don't come back. The, the wait, <clears throat> for whatever reason, or the... Yes, you may approach my daughter. I'm gonna draw up like one of those, like <laughs> if then, then you go here. Yes, like, this is if right. you talk to her first, no. <laughs> um, if you talk to me first, probably still no. <laughs> so, what I was gonna say though is, after Daddy has decided that this is a man who would be compatible <laughs> with his like daughter him. and would be able to lead. Like, is a leader. That's a very important thing At this point, I've told this young man nothing. Right. Right. About well, however it's... she might feel about it. Oh, yeah. No, at this Josh point, this, is, is, this is all daddy. Yeah. Virginia has no clue at this point. And, yeah, Joe Schmo. Virginia has a little pansy and isn't willing to talk to daddy. He can go away. <laughs> so, at this point, he has... this point, Virginia Student has no work. idea that Joe has come and asked. Right. Yep. So, once daddy has decided that... Joe is okay and Virginia can know. The plan is that Daddy will go to Virginia and say, Hey Virginia, what do you think about Joe Schmo? And Virginia might say, No. <laughs> and we'll say, Okay, Joe Schmo, we've decided, meaning Daddy has decided. Sorry, Joe, you're out of here. <laughs> we do not Something want Virginia to feel like she is hurting a man's feelings. Poor men. I'll just slap him. Hurting a man's feelings. I wouldn't want hurt his feelings. By being the one to say, <laughs> no, I don't want this relationship. Are you going to slap him if you don't like him? We want this to be, we want this to be daddy being the head of the household, mm -hmm. saying, sorry, Joe, but this isn't going to happen. And it not being, well, Virginia doesn't like you. Right. So, <clears throat> Because saying that Virginia doesn't saying. like you can ruin a good friendship even right. if it's not leading to courtship or marriage. Right, right. Or whatever. And it's also <laughs> part of the protecting part of like the father's role to make it so I don't have to do that thing. I'm the bumper. But we also don't want Virginia to know <laughs> Joe has approached you. Daddy. <laughs> Let's say Joe approaches Daddy and Daddy <laughs> says Joe is not meant for my daughter for whatever <laughs> reason. Like let's say he's not a good leader or he isn't compatible with Virginia for whatever reason. We don't want Virginia to start having feelings about Joe mm -hmm. if Joe is, like, we're not going to tell Virginia that Joe has approached Daddy if Daddy says no. Like, because mm -hmm. we don't want her heart to be in this until we've said, yes, this is a person that she could court. Even trust. Mm -hmm. So when Daddy has decided it's someone she could trust, he goes and says, what do you think about Joe Schmo? If she says, yeah, I would, I would go into a relationship with Joe, which is a, we are seeing if we are compatible for marriage. This isn't, we're seeing if we like going bowling together. Right. We're seeing if we like the same movies. This is a mm -hmm. intentional... Can he handle life on the street with him doing evangelism? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a period between friends and engagement. It's not like now you're engaged and you got to get married. Like it's testing right. to see if you're yes. right for each The That step does not mean, mm -hmm. yes, they will definitely get married. But the goal is marriage. The goal is marriage. Yeah. It's leading towards marriage. Right. It's not for recreation. And I, I would say unless something dramatic changed, <clears throat> it most likely would lead to marriage. Right. But Joe could be a like great said, you, guy you and just not be on. for Yeah, you can find that mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, I mean, yep. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's okay. So, like, if, if Joe approached us, we 
have, Regina already has a whole list of questions, which by the time Joe approaches us, like depending who this Joe is, we might know a lot about Joe or we might know very little about Joe. Being that our family is very out there on the camera <laughs> and everything, um, we may have a Joe that approaches us that we really don't know very well and this whole process is gonna take longer and it might be daddy talking to Joe for months before anything is said to anyone. Because if we don't know Joe very well and we need to find out more about his character or his work ethic or any of those things. I'm going to talk to his parents. I'm going to talk to mm. his, the leadership of his church. I'm going to talk to his He's employees. He's going to get grilled. going to talk to his enemies? People who don't like him? <laughs> I, I am not him. We believe in the permanence of marriage. We don't take marriage lightly. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a big deal. It's a great thing. It's going to be pursued. It'll it'll be done right in God's timing. It will happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be very long, honestly. But when you're married, you're stuck. Um, so, better get the right guy. Before we're on the other end of this conversation. Just but, but depending, them, Joe. but depending who this Joe is, and this goes for all of our children, depending who this Joe is, um, or it's Joe Gina for the <laughs> boys. <laughs> um, you said Jill. Depending who this Joe is would depend on how long daddy investigates him before mm -hmm. he says, yes, we will go to the next step of Virginia, or how long Virginia would take to go through, like, she has a list of questions all written out, so what, 150 questions? Uh, maybe closer to 100 now. She's cut some out. Whittled but down, if, uh, let's say someone that we've... Mm -hmm known from this area for 10 years were to approach you tomorrow, you already might know the answers to 50 of those questions. Mm -hmm. So the questions, some of them are like theology. Some of them are, or so some of them are like your views of God. I'm going to explain it in simpler terms. Some of them are your views of God. Some of them are how that plays out in your life. Like, what do you think of a stay at home mom? What do you think about homeschooling your kids or public schooling your kids? Those types mm -hmm. of questions. And some of them are simple, just, what do you think about living in a camper? That's not a, no, I'll, I won't Maybe marry you because you don't want to live in a camper. Some of them are getting to know you type questions. What what are you willing to do if God were to call someone to a different lifestyle type questions? And even, yeah, and even some of them are just because of things that I've seen in other couples that might seem like, why would you even ask such a question? But like we have friends who, I mean, we love these people. Um, but the husband, if he's out like doing a bunch of ministry stuff with the team, he prefers they have their own place to stay because he's he prefers just the quiet time and all of that stuff. And so just getting to know whether this is like a people person and do you always want to have people over at your house or is having private alone time every day really important to you and you wouldn't like having overnight guests for a week. Like I don't just think that's marrying an introvert. Oh. But, but just things like that, that it, like certain things have just come to mind as like I'm very much a people person and so seeing other couples going through life, I can be like, oh, that, work, that works well for you, but is that going to work well for me? And just Well, and also sometimes, like I mean, Mark and I are still finding things out about each other 20 years in mm -hmm. that sometimes if I had known it, 20 years ago it wouldn't have been a make or break it but it may have changed my thought processes on things because I didn't realize he preferred one way over another not not mm -hmm. that it's a bad thing but like I don't mind having this we'll use yeah. this about having people in the house and stuff yeah. I don't mind hosting people all the time like I love hosting people that's great she Mark does. because of his dystonia needs quiet sometimes I love hosting people until I can't and then he falls that apart. And so it's not that I'd be like, no, I'm not going to marry you because we can't have people here all the time. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I we just have camera. people and they just get used to me falling down. But it definitely, sorry, I didn't mean to kick it. But it definitely um, would have made me think differently when I try to plan things that maybe caused interruptions to our family at the start because I just didn't plan things well with his preferences and my preferences working together as well as we can make them work now because mm -hmm. we know each other better. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 
So we're planning for a courtship to be very much intense, deciding. <laughs> intense. Well. <laughs> just sounded funny. Intentional, it. shall I say. Yes. Intentional mm -hmm. time and not just for recreation. Mm -hmm. So not our, just figuring out if you like each other, but. <laughs> right. Let's, let's go work in the garden together. Let's go do evangelism together. Mm -hmm. Let's go build this thing together. Like, let's, let's go to work with you. The plan very much is for the two of them, whoever the two of them, Virginia and Joe, to do real life things together. Like real life things. Like our family has not bowled in Josiah's about to be ten. They yep. bowled yep. together last when Josiah was two weeks old. Mm -hmm. So that's not something we do regularly. So that not that bowling's evil or anything like that. But because that's not real life for our family, it doesn't make sense to put Virginia and Joe in that place of well, how do we get you guys go bowling together and see if you like bowling? Because that's not something we do. But our family regularly walks mm -hmm. as a whole family with all the children down to the Owl's Head Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. So if Joe went on a walk with us and we saw how he interacted with the little kids, and if he got impatient because the little kids were stopping and looking at the flowers rather than walking, or got frustrated because one of the kids was crying over something he didn't think they should be crying about, mm -hmm. those are red flags in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that's a make it or break it. I'm saying you need to know why the person thinks I like think that. a lot of young men don't have any clue how to deal with children at all really mm -hmm. and this so there yeah there, there are some that would be frustrated having zero experience with yes such a if thing, joe comes from could learn. a large family he may very well integrate with lots of little kids mm -hmm. or he may be one of those people that families have taught we age segregate mm -hmm. The teenagers go off to youth group. The teenagers go off and do this. We know a lot of families that their teenagers are of a, like of a <clears throat> middle size family where the teenagers really have very little interaction with these younger siblings. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't know that they really know how to handle younger siblings because their attitude towards them is awful. Like, let me get away from these little children. Mm -hmm. Right? No, not children. Pets. So Virginia Pets. wrote a letter in her book about siblings. How you should be siblings. But what I was going to say also, when I, we were talking about Joe, if Joe comes from a very small family, maybe Joe's the youngest of, you know, two kids. If he's never had experience with younger kids, mm -hmm. it's not a, he's off the table because he gets impatient. Part of it too yeah, is... Yeah. Is he willing to learn about circumstances he's not used to? Mm -hmm. It's the because you can give him experience with siblings. Yeah, <laughs> it's the teachable spirit. Because men, while they're supposed to lead, also mm -hmm. need to be teachable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because yeah. that's another danger: is men who won't be taught. Yep. I'd also want to see him in situations of like open air evangelism, and. Um, College campuses would be a really good place for that mm -hmm. because people can be argumentative. People can be really interested in having a conversation and you get into really deep spiritual things or they may be bringing up objections and how do you answer these things. Um, also preaching just to see how he handles himself in that and handles um, whatever situations may arise in that. Um, and also in a harder context, like one place I was talking about um, our friends go down to CARM, which is a homeless shelter in mm -hmm. Knoxville. Um, and so, like, one of our friends, Tyler, is getting married in a couple weeks. And he goes at, down to CARM. So I was just saying, seeing somebody in a situation like that, of how is he reacting even in difficult areas for ministry? Um, in hard contexts. And it also depends on your family. Like, because we are a family that does go out on the street a lot, these are important things to us. Mm -hmm. But what is important within your realm? Like, as Christians, we need to be out with the gospel to other people. But that might not look like open-air preaching. But if you're somebody person. who goes to nursing homes instead or talks to your neighbors a lot about yes. the how does, how does this? Yes, how does Joe interact in those situations not yeah. just like 
Well, it do doesn't you have, have those to be situations. Somebody. Like, yeah. do you do you tell others about the gospel? If you don't tell others about the gospel in any sort of regularity, then you're probably not going to fit in with anybody in my family anyway. But me, but like, I'm just saying for other people that are watching this that yeah. isn't our family. Yeah. I mean, if your family regularly helps with like the VBS type programs at your mm -hmm. church or you regularly go out to fairs and hand out tracks yep. if your family if your family sings and yep. he comes along and he helps carry in the instruments and set up the sound equipment yep. like it, it doesn't have to look the same for everybody but how yep. does he interact in the ways his family does evangelism mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. your family does evangelism and kind of can he can he answer questions about the bible that are brought to him Mm -hmm. In different ways, right? So what else? Do if we he have? can't answer questions from believers about what the Bible means, he probably can't. I mean, from unbelievers about what the Bible means, he probably can't answer deep spiritual questions from believers either. Right, and I mean, getting back to the husband part, like when you do get married, you're supposed to be washing your wife with the water of the word, and you're responsible for knowing what is a rash vow that somebody makes so that you can nullify it. And you have to biblically work through all that process, and you can't just be lazy about it. Like it's a lot of work. But, yeah, okay. And and for someone who's watching this, who already is married, like I know that we might have some people that are watching this that maybe just have young kids and they didn't go through courtship or anything mm -hmm. like this. These are things we've been mulling over and adjusting in our minds for years now. Years. But we haven't tested them yet. We haven't tested them. But if you are a couple who has gotten married and maybe you weren't very strong believers when you got married, maybe you were just baby Christians or maybe you've even become a Christian since you've been married, starting the training of your children in these aspects, um, in Bible knowledge, and that can start today. Like yep. it, even if you've never done anything, let's say you have a 10 year old and you've never done anything you can start teaching them biblical truth today and teaching them what marriage looks like. Like for me, I grew up in a family where my mom and dad were married. Most of my, um, like some of my aunts and uncles had been divorced before, but I knew like that was wrong. And I knew the people they were married to now, like I didn't have a lot of family members that divorce was talked about like, in a light way, I guess is what mm -hmm. I would say. Where I know some people who, like, every marriage in their family has ended in divorce. Mm -hmm. um, like, Vodi Bauckham is one of the speakers we listen to. He talks about how him and his wife are one of only, like, three couples in... 25. 25 that are, like, still married. Um, and so that... It might look very different from what your normal... What's normal in your background. But the Bible talks about marriage as a man and a woman for life, um, till death do us part. It doesn't say, well, we're not happy anymore, so we're going to get divorced. Or this is hard, we're going to get divorced. Once you've made that commitment to marriage, it is a commitment. So we're very adamant that we're trying to figure out all those things that may be problems before we say Virginia should marry this man or Virginia decides to marry this man. But like going through this process, this isn't a, well, if it doesn't work out, you know, you can always divorce. No, this is, you're, you're in this. We are not saying that a woman should stay in an abusive relationship where she's in harm's way. We're not saying she should get divorced, but we are saying that she should not keep herself in harm's way. So Absolutely. that's she should right. seek protection. Just want to make sure legal we means, say that. <laughs> family means. We have seen with, so we have been affiliated with SBC churches. Um, things have just come out about sexual abuse in the church and things that have been happening that women were not taken seriously and women were left in situations of abuse, and that is never okay. A woman does uh, being submissive does not mean putting up with abuse, um, and that is a church discipline issue. If should you are be. dealing, be, if you are dealing with that, you need to go seek um, 
counsel from your from your elders. local ACP counsel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would suggest that. <laughs> we would suggest counseling from those who offer biblical counsel, but also do not be afraid and take the steps needed for legal. Yes. If there is abuse going on, then call your legal authorities. Not biblical counseling is important but god has given the state the sword mm -hmm. to execute justice as well so okay. it's not something that should be left only to well i need to get counseling to know how to be a better wife there oh, there's yeah, multiple definitely. things that need to be sought yeah. in those circumstances yes so getting yourself out of harm's way and making sure that legal action is taken when necessary yep. depending like what's going on but we're not right. we're not advocating abuse in any way in this so just the bible is all about protecting the women and the children the the voiceless the you know yeah more uh, we have a responsibility to protect and defend people mm -hmm. and we have like i have a responsibility to love my wife as christ loved the church and give him give myself up for her i don't get to be angry with her and hit her and yell at her and bully her and like that's that's the opposite of what Christ commanded me to do. Right. So when and we, we do have civil authorities for those things. Okay. So when we talk about the permanence view of marriage, it is not stay in abuse. It's don't go try to find another spouse yeah. because the Bible's message of the gospel is always reconciliation. When we are Which is walking, not possible in this life. right? But when we're walking away from God, because marriage is supposed to be a picture of Christ in the mm -hmm. church, and when we are fighting against God, when we are trying to, like, when we're not doing what we're supposed to do as the bride of Christ, Christ remains faithful, mm -hmm. and there's the idea of reconciliation that you see many times in like the Old Testament with Israel is like we just finished judges in church. Israel did what was right in their own eyes. And God, and God buys them back. He saves them again. He calls them out. He yeah. loves them. He protects them. He shows them mercy. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. But that may not be possible and don't keep yourself in an unsafe situation. Yeah. yeah. So there we go with that. So what else do we have to say about courtship? She will not be marrying someone who is abusive during the courtship. That does not make sense to me. People who date, like world, how the world mm -hmm. dates. Yeah. When people like have to be in counseling, like not marriage counseling of like we're getting ready for marriage, but like we have to be in counseling because as a couple, we can't stop fighting. You should not get married. Yeah. yeah. You need um, to figure out how to, yeah. If you date and then you if stop you dating enemy, and then you date again. Have, like, Whoever you married shouldn't be your enemy. Right. It shouldn't be a combatant and, or an yeah. opponent. If at some point you had to fight that person or they were doing evil things to you, don't go back to them and marry them at that point. Right. Um, the other thing is we don't plan for courtship to be a long, drawn-out process. Mm. Longer than it needs to be. Like, there is a certain amount of time that it may take. And I don't think we can say what that amount of time is right, until we know who the Joe is. Right, and it's dependent on the cir circumstances, and yep. maybe is it long distance or close distance or just things right. like that. Right, but because if you're if Joe is someone who we've known for a long time, who lives close, who you're going to get to see every day, mm -hmm. so you can work through some of these things, mm -hmm. it's going to be shorter than if it's a long distance person who their job keeps them to, you guys get two hours of phone calls a week while you're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. That would be a longer. But, but without all the other details, but like the idea is to get though to the end where what you have is a a mature young man and a mature young woman who, with the counsel of their families and the counsel of God's word and all of you know all of these things being put together, have complete assurance that their marriage is God's will for them, and He says people get married to be fruitful and multiply it. You know, so we look for babies and, and things like that. We look forward to the fruit at the end. A lot, like a lot of times I think people say, I don't want my daughter to get married until she's 30 or what, you know, then she's not going to date until she's 30 years old. Why would... I'm not saying you need to get people married out of 14. 
I don't, I don't know even what the magic age is, but at 19, I don't think anybody's arguing that you're prepared for marriage. If, if you get married today, nobody would you know, complain. And it's not that we're excited for Virginia to leave the house. No. Because we uh, like having more. Virginia around. But we also don't want to say, well, because we like Virginia around, we're keeping her here and not letting her get married like Much she God's will would for like her to life. Do. Samuel, turn it down. When does she get to be fruitful and multiply? When does Naomi complete her job in order to get to be fruitful and multiply? You complete your job? Yes. Samuel will have the opportunity to be fruitful and multiply. Like, it, it's part of God's plan. I'm not saying they all get married. I hope so. Gideon, it's not your turn yet. And not that you'll ever have any children because that's not guaranteed. But. So, yeah. I guess Daddy was done with that question. <laughs> um, what else do you have to add to that? He's coming back. Um, um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of our thoughts. It's hard because I feel like Virginia is as ready as I can have her be until Joe shows up and I can give her more. I mean, Virginia has been prepared to be a wife and mother in a very traditional household. So if she had a husband who worked very weird hours, yeah. like we know some people whose husband are like, um, work on boats where they go out for a month or whatever or at a time. people who work the night shift. People who work the night shift, people who are in the military, like that might look different and there might be points to, um, sorry, I'm figuring away. There might be points to like help you her with at that point but that would be very dependent on joe um it's she's prepared for the average man to come along the average joe schmo the, the abnormal joe schmo comes along i'm gonna have to do a little more tweaking <laughs> i mean if like not that this is the joe that's coming along but if there was a young man who had been widowed that comes along with two kids that's going to look different walking into right. a marriage than what we're expecting of a single guy around your age mm -hmm. with no children walking into marriage exactly. so so we prepare for as much as we can mm -hmm. and for the real world like i think people think because we homeschool our children are very sheltered <laughs> but virginia is reading up about Muslims right now because she wants to be able to minister to them better. Naomi knows Spanish, so she could have a totally um, secret conversation with somebody in Spanish that I would not know what to do because I don't know mm -hmm. Spanish. Um, she does tell me what she's talking about, but I'm just saying, like, we prepare them for things mm -hmm. within... <laughs> Virginia knows sign language and knows I don't know it very well. <laughs> um, but we can prepare them for the real world looking through a biblical worldview rather than mom she's interrupting you <laughs> <laughs> rather than um sheltering them so i guess it's i've heard the the idea of like having your kids in a bubble and then i've heard the idea of your kids in a greenhouse like making them really strong before you throw them out into the wind and turmoil but giving them time to blossom and grow so that when they hit the wind and the turmoil they're strong and ready to handle it yeah. um not that they're weaklings and so these girls have been taught how to look at things through a biblical worldview mm -hmm. even if it's something that they've never encountered before we like regularly talk about news stories and have them share with us Verses that it reminds them of or things because there's nothing new under the sun. It all comes from Like even if it looks like a new variation, it's still something that has happened before So hmm. and Virginia's tired of this courtship conversation. Sorry. She's gonna go to bed <laughs> Are you the autumn? Anything else you guys want to add about courtship because we're now 40 minutes into our second video. <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> Probably like an hour. Sex. Probably going to go on for like an hour. But Everyone's bored. <laughs> So right, if anybody is still watching at this point, if you have questions, let us know. Mm -hmm. Write them in the comments below. If you're the guy, you can comment below. If you're Joe Schmo from Montana. <laughs> you have to be from Montana. You have to be from Montana. Or Moscow, no, remember? Just, um, what is Moscow or Montana? Oh, yeah, Moscow. We you're thought... a mystery man from Montana or mystery man from Moscow. 
which is actually Mystery Moscow Man. Shout out to Katie. Um, but <laughs> and your adorable baby. Just yes. have to say, she's so cute. She is. Yeah, that Mystery Moscow Man looked out fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, we've just been going with Montana recently for some reason. For some reason, Daddy. Daddy mentioned it the other day. And so it's now stuck. it's our thing. So anyway, we don't even... I don't, I don't know, know anyone who lives Montana. in Montana right now. So if you live in Montana, even if you're not the mystery man, if you live in Montana and watch our videos, let us know below because it's always cool to find out where people are from. <laughs> so that's it. You're just going to want to comment I, now that we're talking about this. We will see you guys next time on Herding Little Cows to the Glory of God. And who knows what topic we'll be talking about then. Bye-bye.